My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Fall from your life so that you can fit into this space. 
pace that your life and your purpose was corrupted in order to find expression can you lift your hands tonight and ask the lord to speak to your spirit you know sometimes we are we are thrown into a deception when we find ourselves under the atmosphere of worship because most of the times worship has this ability to teach our emotional frequencies and that you are getting emotional does not necessarily mean you are touching a, a chord in the realm where it matters i came to realize that the business of life it is it's not it is not it's not it's not wrong on the economy of emotion the only component of your soul that is responsible cardinally for the business of life is your will that is why when you gave your heart to christ that economy was transacted on the strength of your will not your emotion most times what we call the presence in the midst of worship is not actually a contact with the realm of the divine it is only our emotional frequencies being manipulated and then that you cry wept and laid on the ground does not necessarily mean something has happened because when the spirit touches you he has the powers to control your life and regulate you when you come under the presence of god and the essence of god is transmitted into you you become a reflection of his reality your life become a vista through which the dimensions of heaven can be seen can you ask the lord for administration tonight i came tonight to deposit god into your heart i don't have time to do doctrinal matters i don't have time to school you in the exegesis of purpose i only came tonight for those whose heart to be open a few of you that truly have a hunger to have an encounter with god because you have come to a point where you know your life must strike a chord in eternity so you have come with an open heart for god to touch you it is when you begin to touch and make contact with the energy of the mortals that is when you realize that even the weakest of you can become as strong as david I read stories of wise people, mighty women like Catherine Kuman, people who were vulnerable. They looked like vegetables in the outside, but something was built in their inside that is stronger. It's as mighty as Mount Zion that cannot be moved, because they began to make contact with the realms of the divine. I didn't come to talk to everybody. I came to speak to those who are numbered into this army, the army of Zion that is marching on with this alarm of revival. Can you ask the Lord to minister to you tonight? Zelo braha se fila manto brina haske blahada bandra brahada kuria. Ila mamori kasivo vaha sapin rana kalas. Sele babari kamanto sopri nataka valila pundi la gadanata. Hereneko papa rasido faranade la kubi atatani. Sele mamo alahate hombre safata kabila para tonza. Brele kababa suza lahada baba bori ala mahata. Ila matua baraku pati suza la mata kuwa Ila vale kume la haza zavone Ele Dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from afar Draw me near to where you are. Can you make that your prayer tonight? I don't want to be where you are. I just want to be there, Lord. In your dwelling place forever. Take me to the place where you are.
ask that tonight destinies will be realized. Purposes will be born. Bodies will be placed on the hearts of people. And the ability of the spirit to bring forth will also be transferred. I ask, oh God, that you will cause men and women to gain wisdom. And become wise. Let understanding be furnished tonight. And let the things that matter, the priorities in the heart of the Father, be revealed to us tonight. Holy Spirit, bless us with your presence. Bless us with your presence. Bless us with your presence. We give you praise. We give you glory. There will be three layers of impartation. The first layer of impartation will be a baptism of fire. It's going to come to activate your prayer altars. So that energy will be furnished in your spirit. The second layer of impartation will be for activation of spiritual gifts. Most of you who are prophetic, you will see tonight. It's not when you go home and dream. There will be activation of prophetic gifts and spiritual gifts. The third layer of impartation will be the release of apostolic mantles. There are many ladies here who, who are carriers of the spirit of a judge. Anointings that make a woman to stand in the place of a man and to lead the mantle of a judge, the spirit of Deborah, we arrest on many of you. What I'm saying, I don't need your amen. It has happened in the spirit realm already. I just want to guide you by furnishing you with some level of understanding so that when the spirit rests on you, you will know how to trade with it. Most of you, your life will change from now. You will live here and you discover that the hunger, a hunger will be shot into your spirit. It will become impossible for you to go a day without prayers. Most of you will live here with lengthy fastings. You will receive clear-cut instructions from the Holy Spirit, lengthy fast for many months. You will be overtaken by the Holy Spirit. Most of you, your lives will change. Your choices will change. Your priorities will change. Your presence in this meeting is a Holy Ghost setup. You have been set up for destiny. You know, Paul left, Saul left his father's house looking for the missing asses. They journeyed past four cities and they came to Ramah. <laughs> and Samuel told him, he said, it's not, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you as king, as captain over his people? That utterance implicated him for the rest of his life. He was a young man just living a life of freelance. He said, as you leave me tonight, you are going to find two men by the sepulchre of Rachel. They will be carrying... Don't worry. Let me follow. Let me build up gradually.
sowed seeds. So it's possible for seed sowing to be ongoing when people are sleeping. We are doing business with your spirit man. Hallelujah. So, don't struggle. But if by any means you are able to catch our flight, fly. Hallelujah. I'll just say a few scriptures this morning. Obviously, I can't do any profound teaching. It's not possible to do that given the limited time. What time are we coming in the morning? Secretary is a man of many documents. He has to check again. Yes, Jesus began to educate us about matters that pertained to our original purpose. Matters that pertain to our original frame. You see, there are many things you can get from the Bible. You can get strategy for politics from the Bible. You can get strategy for business from the Bible. You can also get religious tips from the Bible. But there are three forces that hold the realms together. There are three forces that hold the realms together. The first is an entity. It's a personality in the spirit. It's actually an enthroned personality. And the name of that personality is called the Christ. He is the center of reference. It is from him that everything in the visible and invisible creation derives essence and meaning. Apart from the throne of Christ, nothing in this realm will have a reference. Nothing in this realm will have an essence. What you call life is actually an effulgence of the possibilities that are from that throne. What you call a purpose, what you call a destiny, are actually wisdom capsules that are dished into your vessel as a responsibility you are going to carry out in time. And it is all regulated by that throne called the office of the Christ. Without the office of the Christ, nothing will have relevance. In fact, he is like the fulcrum of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit functions by the office of the Christ. The office of the Christ gives expression to the Father. Don't worry, give me a floating sound. The office of the Christ is the most popular office in the Godhead. The Bible said it pleased the Father that the fullness of the head would dwell in him bodily. The Holy Ghost, when he came into the world, he said he's not coming to speak of himself. He said what he has heard is what he's coming to tell you. So the office of the Christ is one of the cardinal forces that holds the realms together in place. So for your life to have meaning, you must you must of necessity make contact with that entity in the spirit called the Christ. He is the administrator of all the policies that come from the throne of God. Whether you have a destiny is a function of what comes from that throne. The, the seasons of your life, what you call possibilities, chance, are all a calculation that comes from the throne called the Christ. So if you don't make contact with that throne in time, you are without a reference. You are like a balloon flowing without the influx of gravity. So your life begins to make meaning the day you make contact with that office. It is the most influential place in heaven. It's called the right hand of God. It's a kingdom term. It's the most influential place in Zion. That was the throne that Lucifer coveted when he was in. He saw that there was a place in God where an entity apart from God could dwell and exercise authority that is like God. But the only personality that satisfied the claims of divine justice and was given the stature to sit on that office was the personality called Jesus Christ. And that office is called the office of the Christ. And that office is one of the cardinal forces that regulate every affair in all of the universes of God. In fact, it is that Superior to faith. 
You know, in this world, you walk by faith as a believer. You walk by faith. But there are certain things in heaven that are superior to faith. The counsel of God is the strategy of God in what God wants to do. So, for example, if God wants to win a war, it is the strategy that comes from heaven you must align with for your activity to be accepted in the realm of the immortals. God is not just interested in winning a war. There is a how that God wants to win a war. That how that you must follow is called the counsel of God. The wisdom of God is the intelligence of God that designed every possibility that you see in your world. And until you subscribe to that wisdom, your life will have no meaning. There, there are many kinds of wisdom that you can interact with in time because there are many spirits that gives out or dish out different kinds of intelligence. You know, the Bible said the wisdom that is of this world is sensual. But he said the wisdom that is of above is pure. The wisdom of God, the counsel of God, and the will of God. If you don't know the will of God for your life, everything you did in time is a waste. It's possible for you to breathe the air on your nostril for 80 years and go back to heaven. And according to the calculations in heaven, you didn't live in this world. Because you never found the will of God to subscribe yourself with. You know, Jesus had so much powers and authority while he walked on this earth. For example, Jesus said, when they came to arrest him, he said, he would, if he wills, he can ask the Father. And the Father will release 12 legions of angels. That means faith was active. But faith cannot function against the will of God. Because the will of God is superior to faith. So Jesus had to surrender his powers, his possibilities and his faith. And subscribe to the will of God at that time. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, weeping and crying, he had the will to choose not to die. But he decided to subscribe to the will of the Father. Because the will of the Father is superior to anything you can do in this world. So if you have not found the will of the Father, you have not started living. Because life begins when you find the will of God and you subscribe to it. You may spend all your life, because everybody in your family is intelligent, and then according to the calculation of your father, everybody is either either to study engineering, medicine, or law. According to his calculation, everybody must study a professional course. And because you had the natural abilities to fulfill that possibility, you gave yourself to medicine, and you studied medicine, and you did very well. But from heaven, according to the design on the blueprint in heaven, maybe you were designed to be an evangelist. Or maybe you were designed to be a politician so that you can be in the systems of this world and create laws that will make it possible for the gospel or the purpose of God to find expression. If you like, study medicine and be the best in medicine all your life. When you go to heaven, you will not have relevance because according to the wisdom of God, you were fabricated to bring a dimension of God into this world that can only find expression through the will of God for your life. When you deviate and function in another pathway, no matter how excelling you arrive in that possibility or in that career, it will not strike a chord in the realm of the immortals. Because the immortals, they manipulate the visible creation. They regulate the visible creation. And it is according to their wisdom, their will, and their counsel that the visible creation is wrong. All of the possibilities that work within the wisdom of God, the will of God, and the counsel of God are what we call the mysteries of the kingdom. They are beyond what your mind can imagine. They are things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he occurred to the heart of man. So you will never understand how a fisherman can become the most prized and the most choiced person that Jesus will pick to work with him. And then that fisherman subscribes to a kind of wisdom that is beyond the wisdom of mortals. And he alters things and they study those things for many years and they cannot exhaust it. Some of the statements people like Peter made today they are studying them in school of theology. They don't understand the full scope yet. Because fishermen have become men that speak from the realms of the waters. It is a cardinal proponent of the wisdom of God. So your life cannot find meaning unless you subscribe to the things that flow out of the wisdom of the will of God and the counsel of God. We call them the mysteries of the kingdom. Most times to your carnal mind they can only make it is born in your spirit. That's why the Bible said the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God because they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. God wanted to deliver people from bondage and the person he goes to is a stammerer. It is a function of an intelligence that is higher than everything you can imagine. They are called the mysteries of the kingdom. And the third 
important thing that regulates the kingdom are the principles of the kingdom. There are principles that your life must be conformed to for you to ever make a headway in life. If you go against the principles, you hurt yourself. The only way you can be relevant is to subscribe to the principles. If you don't align to those principles, you will struggle in life. And after you are done struggling, you will waste. Because those principles are like navigatory pathways that everybody must connect to in order to have meaning. The principles are like ancient landmarks. They don't shift. They don't change. For example, we say, study to show thyself approved unto God. A watchman that needed not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you don't study, you will be ashamed. It's an established principle in the kingdom. He said you should be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So whatever you do to keep you fervent, you must do it. Air service to God cannot find expression. They are principles. They are principles. He said whatever your hand find it do, to do, he said do it well. They are principles. If you lay your hand on something to do and you don't do it well, in this life you will not succeed. They are principles. So you don't go into business because you are born again. The other guy who doesn't know Jesus, if he aligns with the principle, he will succeed in the business, he will fail. That's why the richest man in the world is not a Christian. Because the realm is governed by principles. And only men who connect to them can have meaning and find expression. These three cardinal things are the things that regulate and manipulate the possibilities that are in the visible creation. The office of the Christ, the mysteries of the kingdom, and the principles of the kingdom. But no matter how well you try, you will never strike a chord with God, except you are restored back to factory setting. You know, the finished works of Christ procured all salvation. So legally, the spirit, anybody that accepts Jesus is saved. But all of those possibilities are realities in your spirit man. Your spirit is not what manifests in, in the natural realm. Your spirit is locked in the realm of God. Your body is locked to the realm of the natural. What gives expression to your possibilities in the natural is your soul. And unfortunately, your soul was not born again. Your soul is still a fallen entity. Just the way your body is still a fallen creation. The extent to which your soul can resemble your city is the degree to which you subscribe to the policies that govern the operation of the man that God created so that you can be restored back to default setting. God created the spirit. He formed the body. But he didn't do anything about the soul. The soul became. The soul is actually a product of the interaction between the spirit and the body. So the soul can align to the body direction and it can also align to the direction of the spirit depending on which one it is predominantly subjected to its government. But because of the fall, because of the other entities that have come into this world, your soul have subscribed to the natural and your soul have been educated by the philosophies of the spirit that are anti-Christ. That is why you find yourself think fear, think evil, think corruption. Because over time, your soul has been regulated by the wisdom that you see in your natural world. Now you have come into a new government and a new economy. And you need to learn how and what you must do in order to recalibrate your soul and bring your soul back to a new doctrine, a new tutelage, a new training so that your soul can begin to mirror the dimensions of your spirit. It is on the strength of that possibility that Jesus made a statement in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. And that's where I want to begin from tonight. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. If you study that scripture in context, you'll see that Jesus used that statement to buttress the fact that the widow did not restrain in her prayer until she got what she wanted. That is contextual interpretation and that is accurate. But the statement Jesus made there is deeper than the story that is captured in that context. The statement Jesus made there was a statement that borders on the design of man. What Jesus was trying to say in that scripture is that it is going to be impossible for you to be an accurate man if you don't subscribe to the laws of prayer. If prayer is not a pure, forget, you cannot be the man that God created. You will be like a laptop or a phone that is, is full of virus. You cannot carry out the will of God for your life. It's not possible. Because according to the design, men ought, ought always to pray and not to faint. That means 
just in case you begin to engage the prayer enterprise and you faint. He said, continue. Because fainting is not supposed to be part of the DNA of your spirit. You were designed as a being of prayer. Prayer is actually the economy that your spirit man runs on. If you are here or you are a Christian, you are a believer, you are anywhere and prayer has not become a cardinal part of your day-to-day -day activity, Jesus is trying to say, you are not the man that God intends. Because he said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. You see, when we begin to talk about the business of prayer, people don't understand what we are really talking about because they don't know the scope. They don't know the extent. They don't know the import and they don't know the implication of prayer. They don't know the impact of prayer in life and destiny. So they do the things that are easy. You know, because of the way your body is trained, your soul component is such that your emotions are the most flexible part of your soul. Your emotions are easily influenced. They seem to be the outermost part of the soul. The most easily contactable part of your soul seems to be your emotion. And because of that, your emotions fluctuate very rapidly. So somebody who is excited in a second can become very depressed. Because the emotion has the possibility of fluctuation. And that is why I told you when I began that spiritual businesses are not transacted on the strength of emotion. There is a deeper component of your soul that spiritual business are carried out of. It's called your will. The first place prayer begins to impact is your will. That's why you notice that when you go to kneel down to pray, you, you don't feel like continuing the prayer. Suddenly time becomes very long and elongated. Five minutes become like three hours. Prayer will first of all train and educate your will to choose God and not this world. That is, that is the battle you are actually undergoing that time you began to pray. You want to go back to relax. You want to go back to the possibilities that you have been educated with to function within. But prayer is trying to drive you into another economy that you are not used to. And if you continue to hammer on it, hammer on it, a point will come when your will will be educated to align with the Spirit of God. Your life will begin to find meaning the day you begin to do business with prayer. You know, one thing you don't know is that um, most people think life is a function of chance, luck. You know, so people make statements like, if it's the will of God, it will happen. Here is not heaven. The only place where that statement is correct is in the third heaven. In the third heaven, only the will of God finds expression. So anything that is the will of God in the third heaven will happen like that. But in this world, it can't happen like that. Because there are other governments that man have opened the atrium to. So it may be the will of God for you to get married at 23. A spirit can fight and you'll be on a stamp state you are 35. It can be the will of God for you to be successful in life. But a spirit can fight you and keep you at a standstill. And at 40, you are still looking for a job. You started looking for a job when you were 23. You look for a job until your age range went beyond the age of job limit. Every job you go for now, they say, is below 29. You are now 48. The will of God was for you to be successful. But there are other spirits in this world that are fighting. The dominion of God is no longer the absolute dominion in the earth realm. There are other governments in this realm. So when Jesus was educating us to go back to the foundation of all things and begin to pray, what Jesus was trying to do was to bring us back to the authority that the original man has to control, to manipulate, and to regulate the activities and the possibilities around his life. Because the first man that God created in the garden, everything he wanted to see, he only uttered them. That man was functioning under the absolute government of God. So the authority of God was backing him up. But the man that is currently living is a fallen man. So when Jesus said, men ought always to pray, Jesus is telling us to go back to the blueprint of our original design. Of which if we don't go back to, there is no way we can succeed. The second thing Jesus said was that, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You are made up of three components. The spirit component, the soul component, and the body component. 
Because your body came from the dust. Your body will feed on things that come from the ground. But there are other two parts of you that do not come from the ground. Your spirit came from the spirit of God. So the same way you pay attention to feeding your body, that is the same way you are expected to pay attention to feeding your spirit. So Jesus said, man must not live by bread alone. That means Jesus is not discarding the need to live by bread. But what Jesus is saying is that the same way you feed your body, you must have to feed your spirit. But unfortunately, most of us, our spirits are starved. And because our spirit man is so starved, destiny is far from us. And the only way you will discover it is when you have a problem. When you have a challenge, you will discover that the energy to come forth, to fight, and to bring what you need will no longer be there. Then you begin to wonder why. And then you resort to crying. The unfortunate thing is that crying does not record anything in, this, in, the, in the scales of balances. You may cry for three days and your tears will fill a drum. It will not shift anything. Because there are different currencies that they use to transact in the spirit. Tears is not one of them. So you must make it a conscious responsibility to build your spirit with the word of God. These two things are very cardinal in restoring you back to your original design. And until your original design begins to find expression, you will be a light feather before the powers of darkness. You know, the hyper-grace religion, the hyper-grace doctrine makes you feel Jesus has paid the price, Jesus has done it all. But before you even go into doctrinal argument, you know that the price Jesus paid also covered sickness. So he paid completely for sickness. But the question you ask, are believers still sick? If your answer is yes, then what it means is that there is something you need to do in order to lay hold on what Jesus paid for. Because what Jesus paid for is in the spirit. You must carry out an activity to bring it to your daily experience. One of the ways to trap those things is by prayer and by meditation. Sitting, eating the word of God. But these are old practices that are no longer in the body of Christ. Before we can begin to talk about matters of destiny, we need to look back inward and check the frequency and the degree of engagement of these two things that Jesus recommended to be original part of our design. How many times, how often, and to what degree do you engage the altar of prayer? So the problem you have, first of all, is not the problem of the devil. It's the problem of you not subscribing with the provisions that are there for you in the spirit. How many times do you feed on the word of God? And how consistent are you in dealing with the word of God? If your answer is no, then that is where the root of your problem is. You may get a prophet to tell you everything about your life in every season and in every year you will live from now. But that you know it does not mean you will enter it. Knowing it is one thing. Entering is another thing. Because for you to enter, there must be an energy in your spirit man to push you into it. The question today is, use me, O Lord. But there will be no possibility of God using you except you first of all choose to align with the will of God by trading with the things that God has provided. And two things God has provided for you is prayer and the word. If you really want God to use you, the question is not to go and kneel down and say, Lord, use me. The question is to begin to engage the things that God has put in place for those who want to be used to transact with. To what extent have you begun to transact with it? If you have not started transacting with prayer and the word of God, then the cry of use me is not, is not existent. Because it's just a, the utterance of a hypocrite. I come from meetings most of the times and then the place is shaking, things are happening, and then you think the people really love God. What they do is to come and enjoy the atmosphere that others create. When they go back to their bedroom, you will think they love the presence of God. When the presence of God is thick, the power of God is moving, they are shouting, shaking everywhere. You think they love the presence of God. If you truly love the presence of God, you will labor in prayer in your bedroom to generate that same presence. But most people never do it. They wait for somebody else to do it so that they can dive in. The man who was waiting to dive in waited for 38 years. 
Matters of destiny are heavy. So you don't take it for granted. You see, I came to teach you tonight about a technology of spirit civilization. But when I looked at the time, I discovered we can't do that this night. It will be a waste. We can't do it this night. So I just wanted to drop this in your mind and drop this in your spirit. That there's a need for you to wake up and begin to transact with your altar in the place of prayer and to transact with the Lord in the place of the world. Those two things are the things that will energize your spirit man to begin to relate with God. So what we are going to be doing this night is to practice and to engage the prayer altar. Since obviously we can't do any teaching this night, we are going to take time to pray in tongues for 30 minutes. And when we pray in tongues for 30 minutes and we ascend, then we will begin to make demand on heaven to release what is meant for this night. Are we together now? We are going to stretch in the place of prayer for just 30 minutes. For those of you that are not used to this, this economy, it will be difficult. But the cure to prayerlessness is to pray. It's not impartation. The cure to prayerlessness is what? Is to pray. When you pray, then the spirit will help your infirmities. The spirit helps your weaknesses. If you are lying down on the bed, the spirit will not help. I just took time briefly to show you how prayer is important in fulfilling your destiny and making you relevant in the agenda of God. But that will not matter anything to you except you yourself begin to pray. I don't have time to do any teaching, but we are going to pray now. Hallelujah. We are going to do what? Pray now. So this night will be a night of prayer. When we are done praying, we'll begin the impartation, and then we'll go and rest. Tomorrow morning, I'll come and do, I'll do a teaching. I began, I went high, but I discovered it's not for this audience. You know, Jesus said, I have many things to tell you. He said, but you cannot receive it now. So it's a possibility to come with so much, but people can't receive it. And when they can't receive it, keep it. Because you don't waste spiritual substance. He said, I have many things to tell you, but you can't receive it now. He said, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will show you all things. So what I came with this night, I will keep it. If I come back tomorrow morning and it's still relevant, I will release it. But if it's not relevant, when we plug to heaven, we'll find out what is in the mind of God. And then we will teach it. But tomorrow I will teach you the technology of spirit civilization. You will find out the forces that manipulate destinies. And then you will begin to x-ray it in your family. And you will find out why the patterns in your family are taking place. And then you will know what you need to do in order to orchestrate the kinds of deliverance that are necessary to bring your family back to the pedestal where, you were, where they were created to find expression. But it's not for this night. Let's rise up and begin to pray. I'm going to raise just two prayer points. And as we pray, when we hit the crescendo in the spirit, then we'll begin to release the impartation. Don't worry if you are weak. Do you know why you are weak? You are operating with a natural energy. And that energy depletes. But there's also another energy level that you can plug into. If you plug into that energy, you will discover that your weaknesses will be swallowed up. Because you no longer function by your economy. You function by the economy of the divine.
Lord and we shall call upon your name. Hallelujah. I want you to practically, practically tonight, apply something. Listen, spiritual things are not tales, they are not stories, they are not gimmicks, they are not fables, they are realities. And you will never know it until you experiment it. Tonight, I want you to call upon the name of the Lord and ask Him to strengthen you. If you know this and it becomes real to you, when the devil tries to attack your body with sickness, you can call on heaven for energizing. And you'll be shocked. A man becomes strong in faith when he has experience of the things that the scriptures talk about. If you don't have the experience, your faith will be weak. Can you ask the Lord now to strengthen you? Ask him for a touch. Tell him that you are weak in your body. You are afraid. You are sleeping. But if it is possible, if it is possible that God touches people, let him touch you tonight. Ask him for a touch. Ask him for a touch. Ask him for a touch. That's the first prayer point. Ask the Lord for a touch tonight. There are few of you here. I've seen few ladies here that the Holy Ghost have been troubling you for the past three weeks to take time and fast and pray. Take time and fast and pray. It has been heavy on your heart. Can I see a wave? If you are in that category, you are in that category. Let me see a wave. For the past three weeks, take time, pray, and fast. Come out quickly. It's been a body. It's been a body. But the ability to do is always lacking. Deborah's. Deborah's. It's a census of the spirit. It's a census. Census of the spirit. It's a census. The Deborah generation. The Deborah generation. For the past three weeks, look at the number. But you have not been able to. Cry now, cry now, cry now for mercy. Cry now, cry now. Let that envelope come on you. The Bible said the hand of God came upon Elijah and he outran the chariots of Ahab even unto Jezreel. It's the ability of the Spirit. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Touch. Touch. The Deborah, the Deborah generation. Cry now, cry now. Cry, cry. Ask for mercy. Ask for ability. 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 Help them. I don't want, I don't want to Ability, ask for ability. Ability in the spirit. Ask for the ability of the spirit. The poor generation. Touch. Touch. Let that energy rest. Let that energy rest. Some of you will sense heaviness on your hand. Heaviness. Heaviness. A generation of people of prayer. A generation, please help them. I don't want the place scattered. A generation of people of prayer. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, touch. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. A temporal generation, a temporal generation. Fresh baptism, 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 the power of the spirit, fresh baptism, fresh baptism.
baptism. Fresh baptism. one of you. There's a garment of fire coming on one of you. There's a garment of fire. There's a garment of fire. Holy Ghost, clothe that one. Clothe that one, Lord. Clothe that one. Clothe that one, Lord. A garment of fire. A garment of fire. Raising intercessors. Female intercessors by the Spirit. Zapara Kapotas. Zete Kapora Tamalida Zapas. There's somebody The healing anointing is in your hand Listen, listen, listen Let's try to be snappy I've seen somebody that has The healing anointing God wants to use you as a point As a pointer to reach others Once upon a time you saw Something like oil in your palm Like oil You didn't know the source Like oil in your palm Who is the person? You saw something like oil. You are the one. Come. Like oil in your palm. It's a healing anointing. God wants to use you to release that anointing in the house. Oh, you are mighty. On Those of you who know, you have a witness that the power gift is in your spirit. The power gift is in your spirit. The gift of faith. You find yourself going ahead doing things that look as if it's not going to work, but you keep moving. You don't even have time to think whether it will work or not. It's time to connect. It's time to connect. It's time to connect. He said he sent his word to Jacob. He lighted upon Israel. Don't distract yourself tonight. It's the tangibility that matters. When you leave this meeting and these things begin to work, you will know that something has happened. Holy Spirit, I use your daughter and I connect to others. Others that have the same dimension in their spirit. Father, let the oil spread out now. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Let the healing oil activate. The healing oil. The healing oil. There are two people, there are two ladies here that have the healing oil. Your hands will begin to vibrate now. Your hands. Your hands. The anointing will become strong on your palm. The anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will become strong on your palm. Holy Spirit, begin to anoint. Begin to anoint, Lord. Begin to anoint. Begin to anoint. Begin to anoint, anoint, Lord. crying flow it's an activation there's a wind coming there's a wind coming there's a wind coming there's a wind coming is to activate is to activate prophetic people is to activate prophetic people 
See somebody that had a dream, a dream about somebody who died three days ago. I know till now there is fear in your heart. You had a dream about somebody who died three days ago. And it has imparted fear. It has imparted fear. Who's the person? Who is the person? Just be quiet. Who is the person? You are the one? Just lift your hands there. You don't need to call. I activate the season of the prophetic over your life. Receive the authority of a prophet. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Take in the name of Jesus. The authority of a prophet. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Ibalakuba takakuta. Sedi la pari atatinas. Sedu prakatu se palakoni askuva. Venilo prakteki prataka palpaski. Sizon de paradi astoves. Veri kaponata lika paski. I've seen somebody that the Lord is bringing for the past one week or so. God has been instructing you to pray particularly about your family through any pattern, a demonic pattern, a demonic pattern that has to do with ladies. To end the pattern, to end the pattern for the past one week. Who is the person? Is this in the auditorium? You are the one to end the pattern for the past one week. Lift your hands. Your answer have come. I join faith with you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. As I stretch my hand in her direction, I put an end. I put an end. I put an end. I put an end. Let it be broken. Break in the name of Jesus. Let that pattern end. Let that pattern end. Everyone that is affected. I ask for the mystery of acceleration to begin to walk. To begin to walk. The mystery of acceleration. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, I, I don't know, I'm sensing a pain on the ankle. A pain on the ankle. Either somebody has an injury or something on the ankle. Or you were praying for somebody that has something to do with the ankle. The ankle, right? Right ankle or so. The person in the building. You are the one? Come. Is the pain still there? The pain is still there. It's gone. When did the pain leave? Sorry? As we're praying now, the pain left. I wanted her to do an experiment now. Which other person has pain in the body? You have pain or something troubling? You have pain. Okay, you are going to pray for somebody that has pain. He has pain on the ankle. Any other person who still have pain now? Come, come. What, what's the pain? Come. I want to show you the tangibility of, of the things of God. We have made a religion out of too many things. Where is the pain? Okay, you, 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 you. That, have, that God picked up. Place your hand on the belly. And rebuke the pain. Don't pray to God. Command the pain to go in the name of Jesus. Command the pain. Command the pain. Command it to go in the name of Jesus. Walk now. If the pain doesn't go, the lady knows. Check. Is the pain still there? All right. Check now. Check. Check. Don't try to help God. Check. 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 Do the things you couldn't do before. If the pain is still there. Look at that. The power of God that she transferred is still on her. The power of God she transmitted is still on her. Check the pain. Is the pain still there? 
the pain is gone it's called activation of spiritual gifts the power she transferred is still on her the power of God is overwhelming her that's why you don't make a show about people falling down go for tangible things you can come for a meeting everybody is slain but nothing tangible happens lift your hands now God is still telling me he wants to activate the prophetic the prophetic I'm seeing a young man here you have been seeing things from when you were as young as seven when you were as young as seven I'm not saying you just know you have been seeing things and then things happen you know but you can't control it so you can't minister it because you don't have the power to control it it just happen when the things begin to happen then you know you have seen it where is the, the young man you are the one come it could also be on the lady but I saw specifically a young man in the spirit it's a prophetic dimension and if you don't take advantage of it the demons possess you they can pervert it it's people like this that demons use as, as witches a devil can't give you a gift but if he finds you have a gift he can pervert it because you have connection with their realm and that is why you must be schooled in the things of God. You have the same operation in your life. Just lift your hands toward heaven. I want to pray for God to, to help your mind to be gathered. Because most times the reason you can't regulate it is because you are too inspired. Too many thoughts flow through your mind. You are too inspired. So it becomes difficult to be gathered inside. The Lord will help you to be gathered. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. These ones that you have placed a gift on their lives. Right now, Lord. Even as you increase the intensity of that operation, I ask that you quicken them with the maturity to, to wield that scepter. Father, touch now. Touch now. Activate it. Receive regulatory ability. The power of God is still on you. The power of God is still on you. The power of God is still on you. It's working. It's working on your inside. The power of God is working on your inside. It's working. It's working. It's a protocol of the prophetic. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Sick apparatus. I'm seeing three apostles. Three apostles. In fact, I think two of you, two of you just passed out. And God has specifically put in your heart that as you are leaving service, you are going to start a walk for him. Something like a prayer network. You are struggling in your mind because you don't know how it's going to happen. In fact, you have been thinking which name, how do I give a name to a ministry? I don't know who are these people. Can I hold hands with you very quickly and agree with you? Very quickly. They are still in the auditorium. Very quickly, very quickly. And agree with you. Come quickly, we don't have time. Jesus. Your challenge is which name do I give this thing? How do I start? How do I go about it? Forget. The Bible says, as thou knowest not how bones are formed in her that is with child. So you know not the ways of the Spirit of God. I'm seeing a young lady. I'm seeing a young lady in the Spirit. This lady I speak about is a bit slim and fair, tall, a bit tall, average height. Person. God is telling you He's going to use you to raise other women, to instruct them in the ways of God, and to teach them the powers of purity and righteousness. Where is this lady? the one God is telling you we all want you I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the second person God is sending telling you after service where is the person we are rounding up ask God for help it's not by power it's not by might it's by the spirit it's by the spirit hallelujah Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. See, the anointing is beginning to rest on you gradually. Gradually. You will feel the weight on your chest. It's called the weight of glory. What you need is the glory of God to do it. You will find your heart breaking because.
Because what you need is the spirit of purity and compassion. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. A lump is about to disappear from somebody's breast. A lump. A lump. From your left breast, a lump, a lump is about to disappear. Oh my Allah, my Lord. You are seated on the throne. As we worship God now, God will begin to do some creative things. Creative. And they are tangible things. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. There's somebody here, your eyes. You usually have itching, itching sensation in your eyes. Itching sensation in your eyes. That devil is going. That devil is going. Where's that person? Have itching, itching sensation in your eyes. Where's the person? You are the gallery. Place your hands on your eyes. That devil is going. You devil of darkness. I command you in the name of Jesus. Get out of him. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. God is telling me now. Hi, Jesus. Don't worry. This person you don't need to check now. When you go to the hostel, check. When you see what, I, what I'm about to say now, if it happens, you can write it and place it in the morning. Nobody needs to know you are the one. But God tells me, He's healing somebody's private part. You have been having challenge, crisis for a long time. You don't even know how to tell anybody. The power of God, the power of God is healing. The power of God is healing. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Tomorrow morning, when you confirm your healing, you can write it on the paper, come and talk. Nobody needs to know. To the Father, was he
looking for a prophet of God. And we will close the meeting. Thank you. 
what I'm doing here, the person who is calling me is in heaven, is not on earth. So that's where the focus is. Father, 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 let the mantles begin to fall. I make demand of heaven. 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 Let the mantles begin to fall. Let the mantles begin to fall. Gatekeepers in the spirit. Gatekeepers. Gatekeepers. Mordecai. Let the mantles fall. Let the mantles fall. Women judges. Carriers of the spirit of Deborah. Carriers of the spirit of Deborah. Let the mantles fall. Let the mantles fall. I stir the waters of the spirit. Deborah's. Deborah's. Deborah's arise. Deborah's arise. Deborah's arise. Let the mantles fall. Let the mantles fall. Holy Spirit, touch. Touch, Holy Ghost. Mordecai, gatekeepers. Keep us in the spirit, custodians, judges, warriors, 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 warriors. Imalakata kabata kabas, 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 Omekora hata kapapas. Elejo paruata. Zeta kapituas. Monte kaparata. I caused the cloud case to open. Forces limit, limiting. Limiting forces. That truncate destinies. That fight ordinations. Give way now. Give way now. Give way now. Let the rivers of the spirit of God begin to flow. It rises from your feet. It rises from your feet. It rises from your feet. Holy Ghost. Ayan wata, epele, wata, uwalako, melele eta. Omoko, omoko, omoko. E malale kuata, takapata, kapataka, ubata. E yananata, ele atua. E ele ele, e ele ele kumu, atopo kataka patuba, pataka patakuba, pataka patakuba. Ebo atakibo atakira. Somebody is standing on fire now. I'm seeing seraphines, seraphines. Seraphines are beginning to anoint. Your leg is like you're on the coal of fire. It will build up. It will build up. It will build up. It will build up. I call it forth in the spirit. I call it forth in the spirit. I call it forth in the spirit. Ome katoa, sitoa, sitoa. Berakatoba satalia. Ene tabaro, babababoaro. Elato kapaskidoa. Sitoa. There's one of you here that got this. The Holy Ghost is whispering to your heart now. That is raising you to destroy the priesthood in your father's house. It's raising you to destroy the altars in your father's house. God is raising a priest. A priest. A man who will do business on the altar. Where is that person? Lift your hands quickly. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I make demand on the mantles of the ancient intercessors. Men that fought darkness. Men that brought to bear the ordination of destinies of people in territories. I make demand on those altars. Priestly altars. Keepers of divine heritages. I make demand. Oh. Marco Pato Curata. Venindo Pariata. Zetete. Zetete. Parakindo Soprata Kapalataya. Those of you in the middle here. In the middle in front of me. Lift your hands. Lift your hands here quick. Lift your hands here quick. Lift your hands here quick. Very quickly. Very quickly. Touch. 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 Those of you that have touched. There is something coming. There is something coming. You can't fight it. You can't fight it. You have been marked. You have been marked. It's a mark of the hunter. You have been marked. You have been marked. Holy Ghost, touch them. Hey, Epa, Epa. Touch them, Holy Ghost. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. Blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Blow. Blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Oh, like a mighty wind. Spirit of 
victory. God God us with you. The last layer of the anointing is coming. The last layer. 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 Like a whirlwind. Like a whirlwind. Like a whirlwind. Holy Ghost, move. Holy Ghost, like a whirlwind. Like a whirlwind. Like a whirlwind. Oh, like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Cover us with your wings.
we are going to look at um, some very basic and essential things you must understand to maximize your work with the Lord. By the way, tonight or this evening, we are going to be having a healing service. And um, it will be an explosive one, I assure you. We will just do a little bit of Bible studies to prepare your heart for the evening and then to teach you how to make the most of spiritual realities as we sow what tonight by the message of God. So I want to show you a few things that will help your work with God. It's um, the dynamics of information trafficking in the spirit. The dynamics of information trafficking in the spirit. You know, we took the first two sessions to deal with matters of consecration because you can never amount to anything in God unless your life is consecrated to God. The greatest sacrifice of living is the sacrifice of consecration. The sacrifice of consecration is superior to the sacrifice of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is included in consecration. But consecration is the total devotion of your life to the Lord. And that is the only way to live in this realm. Because like I made us understand from the beginning, this realm is littered with many entities with different purposes, different intentions, and different possibilities. In the Garden of Eden, there were only two entities that were granted the legal right of operation. It was God and man. So at that point, Adam could afford to be careless. Because apart from himself and his wife, only God invaded the garden and interacted with them. So fellowship was fluid. Fellowship was flawless. Because man had an unchecked access in his relationship with God. God could just stumble into the garden at any time. The Bible said, in the cool of the morning, in the cool of the day, the spirit, the voice of God came walking in the garden. So if Adam heard anything apart from Eve, he knew it was God. He had a clear court relationship with God. The realm was sealed from the invasion and the interaction of other entities in the realm. It was sealed. But upon the fall, the seal upon the earth was broken. So God was not only the entity that could interact with man and exert his authority. Demons also had access to man. Angels also had access to man. Principalities and powers also had access to man. Rulers of the darkness of this world also had access to man and spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. So, the only way man's security on earth could be guaranteed was by the protocol of consecration. If man wanted to stay intact and secure in fulfilling his purpose in the world, then he had to devote his life perpetually to God. In the garden, whether he liked it or not, his life was collected unto the Lord because God was the only one that had access. But right now, the realm is open. There are many spirits that could interact with him. So he had to make the effort through spiritual intelligence to consecrate himself to the Lord. And that was why we looked at the subject of priesthood. Because it's in priesthood that we are given the wisdom required to completely consecrate ourselves to the Lord. You saw why we were explaining and opening scriptures yesterday how that priesthood will first of all walk God into your heart and secure you from within so that you can become a man of the presence. I showed you yesterday how that the end of priesthood is to come into the Holy of Holies where you have direct contact with the presence of God. And from there, you can now legislate and litigate the purpose of God at the earth realm. So priesthood was that, is that ark that carries us in consecration to God. 
And now that you have understood what it means to consecrate your life, and most of you have consecrated your life to the Lord, you need to understand the systems in the kingdom for trafficking information. Because if you don't know and master how these things work, your life and your work with God will be frustrated. There are lots of things you'll be asking God to do that are already done. You would not just know how to traffic it. And then you will labor in vain. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. He said the labor of the foolish. Weary at every one of them. Because they know not how to enter the city. So the problem is not whether the city is available. The problem is not whether one could enter the city. The problem was the problem of wisdom and understanding. The labor of the foolish. Weary at every one of them. Because they know not how. The moment you know the house of the kingdom and you are willing to apply yourself, then everything that you desire will be at your beck and call. When you see people struggle in life, it's a function of a lack of understanding. I want to show you this morning how informations are trafficked in the system, in the realm. And you need to understand that every possibility in this realm is predicated upon the revelation that you have. If you get the revelation of a reality, you literally walk into it. The realm is so complex that it does not lend itself to a man who cannot access it. If you want to walk in the healing of in healing anointing, for example, all you need is to lay hold on the revelation. If you walk, if you want to walk in the supernatural, all you need to do is to lay hold on the revelation. Revelations are the most prized commodities in the realm. And revelations don't lend themselves to carnal men. The Bible said, We have not received the spirit that is of the world, but the spirit that is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us. And he said, The things of God, they are foolishness to the natural mind. And he said, They cannot have it because they are spiritually designed. So before you lay hold on the revelation, it will first of all transform you. That is why revelations are very complex commodities. A lot cannot have it. But because you have consecrated yourself and you have decided to yield to the Lord, it has become your natural heritage to walk in revelation. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible said something. He said, to them that are without, these things are hid. He said, but for you that is in the kingdom, you have access to it. So this morning, I want to show somebody something that will deliver him or her from struggles in the kingdom. Hallelujah. It's going to be a very short very short exposition, very short exposition, so that we have enough time for our evening service. Spiritual information trafficking. I'm going to touch four basic entities and how they relate, how they transact, and how they communicate in this kingdom. I'm going to talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to talk about the angelic realm And I'm going to talk about The demonic realm And then I'll talk about man These are four entities God, the angelic The demonic and man Because you are on earth And the earth realm is open You cannot But interact with God You cannot but interact with the angelic You cannot but interact With the demonic it's a must, whether you like it or not. You know, sometimes you think, because you don't know it, it doesn't affect you. You are joking. You may not be a scientist, so you may not understand the laws of universal gravitation. But it doesn't mean you are not influenced by gravity. If you are not influenced by gravity, you will float and you will go into space. So whether you know it or not, it doesn't matter. You may not understand the laws of electricity, but you use it every day. So your ignorance does not exonerate you from the effect of these operations. But your understanding will give you an advantage on how to wield it in your direction. So this morning, we are going to look at these factors very quickly. And then we, we will shut down and prepare for the evening. Yes, informations originate from the Father. Every reality has its root in the Father. The word father, for example, is the word fundus. And fundus simply means foundation. Fundus also means the source. Fundus means 
the sustainer. Fundus also means the nourisher. So when we speak about God as Father, we are talking about the source and the origin of all things. So everything originates from the Father. You see that when the world was created, the Bible said in the beginning, Elohim. He didn't bother introducing the Elohim. Who will you introduce him to? Who was there? He was the only one there. So for one, you can't introduce him. Who are you introducing him to? Because there was nothing. He was the only one who existed all by himself. So the Bible said, in the beginning, Elohim. So he reviews God as the source and the origin of all things. And the word Elohim means um, almighty. There are two dimensions to that word. Almighty. It means having all the power and the authority. All the power. You know, eventually you are going to see that there are different powers at different levels and with different entities. But at this point, it refused Elohim as the source of all power. And that was why it was the Elohim that demonstrated the highest feat of power in creation. It is because he sustains all power. That was why he was the one that created the world in the first place. So it's a revelation of him having the ability to bring every other thing out of himself. So God is revealed in scriptures as the source. It also means plurality in oneness. But we don't have time to explain that for now. Alright? Because that's not where we are going to. It is in Elohim that the foundation of the doctrine of the Trinity is found. Are we together now? Because the Elohim speaks of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And in that scripture, you, you see all of that. The Bible said, the Spirit of God hovered upon the waters. And God said, the word went forth. The Spirit hovered on the water. The Father spoke the word. So the Elohim is the revelation of the plurality in oneness. Are we together? The Elohim reveals that there are three persons in one. And the Elohim also reveals that that three person in one sustains all the authority. And in that authority, everything was created. So the Father is the source of all things. That was why in the beginning, you had to begin with the Father. So every form of information, every form of power, every form of revelation comes from the Father. And then somebody is asking, why is there evil? The power is not what is evil. It is the usage and the personality in which the power is with that is evil. For example, if I give you a gun, if a criminal is carrying a gun, you know it's a dangerous weapon. But if a soldier is carrying a gun, it becomes a protective tool. Do you see that? So the father created all things, but it was not the father that perverted all things. And as we go further into the demonic, you look at all of that. The Father is the source of all things. Your life is a projection of the Father. That should give somebody confidence. That means you are not a mere mortal. You are not an ordinary person. You emanate from the Father. You are an offspring of God. You proceed from the Father. So yourself is also a projection of the source called the Father. The Bible said in John chapter 1 verse 12, he said, as many as believe, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. And even before that time, it also made us to understand that all things were made by him. The Father. If you understand that everything proceeds from the Father, then it will alter your orientation in life. When I teach, I try to make it a bit practical because sometimes we hear these things and they just add to your data bank of information and it will not profit you. If you know the Father is the source of all things, when you need, you have a need, the first person that will come to mind is who? The Father. Not your uncle who is a governor. If you know the Father is the source, you know the proof that you know a thing is your application of it. Most of us say, God the Father is our source, but when we have a need, is the last that comes to mind. It's when every alternative fails, we now come to God. And the unfortunate thing is that at that point, we are already in the state of anxiety. So even while you are asking, your mind is still hoping whether somebody will call. That your uncle you talked to yesterday, maybe a call may come in. You are looking. 
you don't juggle your life around like that. Set your gaze on God perpetually. Yes, men may help you, but men are only channels. Men are not your source. God is your source. Everything proceeds from the Father. He created all things. All things came out of Him. Hallelujah. The Son is the administrator of everything the Father produces. The Son is also the substance of reality. The Word of the Lord. If the Father produces life, the form in which we have that life is by the Son. If the Father produces power, the form in which we have that power is by the Son. So, the Son is the one that incarnates the possibilities that proceed from the Father. So, without the Son, you cannot interact with the Father. So, if you want to feel the love of God, for example, Jesus is the one you will touch. It's just like this microphone. You know, this microphone is a complex connection of wires with electric current. If you touch it, you will die. This microphone that I'm handling. The reason I'm able to handle this microphone is because of the covering. So, the covering is what makes the power in this microphone user friendly. Your handset is a, co- is a complex operation combination of circuitries, circuit systems. The reason you can use your handset is because it is packaged in a user friendly format. You can't touch your handset because it will be a complex wires connected in very complex circuits. The reason you can touch it is because it is packaged. This bulb you are seeing is this is current. This thing you are seeing is electric current. The reason you are seeing the light is because of the packaging. If you touch it without the covering, it will electrocute you, you will die. So, the basis of our interaction with the Father is the Son. The Son is the one that makes the Father communicable. So, when God wants to touch you, is the Son you touch. When God wants to relate with you, is the Son you relate with. So, every time you relate with the Son, you are relating directly with the Father. The Son is the substance of reality. The Son is the one that makes the Father communicable and interactable. The Bible says God dwells in the midst of unapproachable light. So you cannot come before the Lord. You can never touch God. You can never come close to God. If you come close to Him, you are consumed. He said He dwells in the midst of the coals of fire. The only reason by which you can touch the fullness of God is because the Son can communicate. He is the full package of the Father. So Colossians 2 verse 9 said, It pleases the Father that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in Him bodily. So any dimension of the Father you want to touch, it is captured in the Son. So when we relate with Jesus, we are relating with the Father. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 1, from verse 1 to 4. Let me read. So that somebody will read the Bible. It's like we've not been reading the Bible. <laughs> we've not been reading the Bible. First John chapter 1. Let me show you this. Sometimes, if you put the word of God in your spirit, it's more effective. When it comes out, it comes out like bullets. The ones that will flow out of you will be the remalized utterances. The Holy Ghost will be shooting them. <laughs> and what is so used to meditating on the Word of God, and most times it becomes a challenge to. But let's make it a Bible study this morning. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the Word of Life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father you see something eternal life is actually a projection from the father he said that life was with the father that means for the father's life to be communicated it will now show you the means by which eternal life was communicated. Eternal life is the reality of the Father. It is the life of the Father. 
but the means by which eternal life is communicated is what he wants to show you he said that life which was with the father and was manifested unto us he said that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with who the father but how do we have fellowship with the father he said it is with his son jesus christ so the eternal life which is the life of the father the only means by which you can interact with him is to apprehend the son that's why he said whoever has the son had life he said for this life is in the son and he also said the son is eternal life so eternal life which was first of all the reality of the father is now communicable to men mortars through a package called the son so the son is the substance of reality everything the father is made up of can be communicated by the son it's just like a virus if a virus wants to be communicated the host does not need to come and live in you all he needs to do is to transfer the virus to you if a mosquito wants you to become wants to give you malaria the mosquito doesn't need to come and live in you all he needs to do is to transmit it into your body if a bacteria gets wants to affect you it just transmits it after a while what makes that mosquito the organic life of that mosquito is transmitted into you and suddenly you start falling sick because you have made contact with malaria the substance of reality is the sun so without the existence of the sun you may never know who the father is the sun is the substance of reality the sun is the proof of the existence of the father without the sun there is no proof that God exists you can never prove the existence of God without the sun it's a system in God for trafficking information it's the, our fellowship is with the father but we have never seen the father we have never made contact with the father the one we made contact with is the son but every time you touch the son you touch the father Philip came to Jesus and asked him he said show us the father that we may know him and he said ah, you mean you've been with me and you've not known the father he said whoever have seen me have seen the father so if you want to see the father look at the son hope you know you've never seen yourself are you aware you've never seen yourself I have seen you but you have never seen yourself before if you want to see yourself look at the mirror the mirror is the proof of your you know when you go out the confidence you have you think you are beautiful is the information the mirror gave you <laughs> you are actually walking based on the information of the mirror it's what the mirror told you your face look like that you now know and then you are forming and acting big game your, your confidence is built by the mirror you have never seen yourself <laughs> it's not the son is the means to the father that's why i say i am the way the truth and the life no man come to the father except by me so if you want to have a relationship with the father you must have a relationship with the son the bible said in hebrews chapter 1 he said in the beginning was the the scriptures see see he said god who had some times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto the father by the son he said, has spoken unto us in this last day by his son. And I now begin to tell you the criteria of the son. He said, who been the brightness of his glory? The word glory is the word doxa. Glory simply means the full expression of a reality. The word translated glory is from the word statue. Do you see a statue? If it's standing under the sun, it remains the way it is. Under the rain, it remained the way it is. Set it on fire. It remained the way it is. It is the full, complete, unaltered expression of a substance or of a reality. So he said the sun is the brightest expression of the fullness of the father. So the father who is the source of all things is communicated by the sun. And that is why when you receive eternal life, which is the life of the father, you only receive the sun. When you receive the sun, you have eternal life. Is a system in God. And then you have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. 
you remember I told you the sun is the substance, right? The substance of reality. The son is the administrator of all the purposes of the Father, right? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. These are not three persons, actually. Or better see, these are three persons in one. Are we together? So they are this it's, it's the same. I'm trying to use the English is deficient in this matter. <laughs> You see, why, why are you talking about God? English, English language is a challenge. It's a challenge. That's why most times Jesus had to use metaphors, you know, to communicate these things. There is a body to use English language. Languages like Greek and Hebrew, they are a bit deeper, you know, to explain some of these things. But English, English is a body. But God will help us. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead, right? Is the third person of the God. But I want to explain the Holy Ghost to you in terms of information trafficking. The Holy Spirit is the experience of God. The experience. The experience of God. Whatever the Son is to you, the means by which you can enjoy it, feel it, and experience it is by the Holy Spirit. That's why, let me give you an example. When you gave your heart to Christ, you received the power of God. But many persons cannot walk in the power of God. Because what will make it an experience is the Holy Spirit. All of us receive healing when we got saved. But many of us are sick. So the question is not whether you are healed or not. If you ask God, He will say you are all the Christians in the world are healed. But if you come on earth, over 70 are sick. The difference between that substance within you and the experience of that substance is a bridge called the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is what brings you into the experience of the substance of God that you have in your spirit. Without the Holy Ghost, the experience of that which God is in you by the Son can never find expression. So, healing is in you in the sight of God, but for you to walk in healing, you must have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. That's why a lot of people talk so much about God, but they cannot demonstrate it. The demonstration of God is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that networks God into you. You will have the fullness of God in your spirit, but you can never experience His reality. You have all the power of God, you will never experience His reality. Unless you cooperate with the Holy Spirit. He is the one that walks God into your experience. He is the experience of God. So the Father is the fullness of all things. The Son is the substance of the Father's reality. The essence of the Father. And the Holy Spirit is the experience of the Father. Let me use the scripture to explain what I have been saying. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 16 to 18 you see what happened in a very short episode Jesus said who do men say I am and the apostles began to bring the suggestions of the scholars of their days you know in the days of Jesus you can't just stand up now the way we stand up now on Facebook and you say the power of God is only available to a man who fast and pray and then people begin to share people begin to share you can't talk like that in those days those days you only communicate what has been debated and accepted from a school of knowledge you know when John stood up in the wilderness and began to baptize the Pharisees came to him he said by what authority are you doing what you are doing it's just like these university systems you can't just wake up one day and say people should come to school, you want to start awarding degree you don't have the stature until NUC accredits the university and gives you the authority to do that you can't just stand up and say uh, I know how to treat them no, 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 you can't build a hospital you must be accredited so the schools of thought of those days headed by the Pharisees the Sadducees and the scribes were the ones that give validation to knowledge so anything that is not validated by them will not be regarded in the public setting as a body of truth. 
So when Jesus said, Who do men say I am? The disciples were telling Jesus all of the conclusions of the bodies of knowledge that existed in that time. And they said, Some say you are Jeremiah. That means they sat down, they studied his life, the way he spoke, the things he did. They now say, No, this is the spirit of Jeremiah. And then they use scriptures to prove that Jesus was Jeremiah. He said, Some say you are John the Baptist. Because they wonders, they saw the guy to me. They said, No, because John came back from the dead, he came with supernatural powers. So it was a conclusion of the school of thought. And some say, Well, we cannot of necessity or certain to say he is any of the prophets, but we know he must be one of the prophets. And when all of them spoke, they were all wrong. So when you deal with spiritual business, your mind is limited. Spiritual truths and realities don't operate at the economy of reason. No matter how you gather the facts and brainstorm, you'll be wrong, even if there are hundreds of you. A whole generation got it wrong. You know, nowadays you say, um, is these people that said it? And they had a conference of bishops. It's on the conference of bishops that they concluded that this thing is true. A whole generation can be wrong. And you will see why that is possible. You will see why intellectualism and cerebrality cannot pass the test of spirituality. Because without the impute of the Holy Spirit, everything you do is ends in futility. The whole body of knowledge that were available for a generation were wrong. And a man just spoke by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And one sentence was more efficacious than the conclusion of theologians and doctors of the law in the whole generation. Because he spoke by his spirit. Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus quickly said, Kai, this answer that you gave did not come from the, the hall of intelligence. This answer that you came is not a product of human reasoning. You have entered into another dimension. It is by the agency of spiritual possibilities that these answers could emanate from you. This is not a product of human reasoning. You have spoken by the voice of an immortal. This utterance that came from you is not the utterance of a mortal entity. You have spoken. Something happened. And Jesus began to show us the dynamics of that utterance. Why that utterance was a possibility. He said, my father, which is in heaven, have revealed this to you. That means revelation is sourced from the Father. Jesus opened our eyes to understand that everything that has its foundation in eternity proceeds from the Father. He said, this was revealed to you by my Father, which is in heaven. You didn't speak from any other source. You spoke only from the source of all things. So the Father, according to Jesus, is the source of all things. And Jesus began to show his own impute. He now began to educate the man. Because that you say you are the Christ does not mean you know it. You only quoted the phrase. He now began to tell him the meaning of that revelation. You know you can come and say. You even see healing. You, you talk about healing. But it doesn't mean you know it. Until the son has his own impute. The impute of the father is that he provides the reality but it is the son that will substantiate the reality so Jesus began to explain to him the meaning of what he received from the father because he said Jesus is the Christ the son of the living God, he didn't know what it meant and Jesus said, this thing you have said has an implication that's where the influence of the son comes this thing you have said has an implication the implication of this thing you have said is that the church have appeared in the world this your revelation is a spiritual strategy Every time a reality will be built on earth that we have an eternal scope, it must first of all come from the realm of the spirit. And it is this type of strategy that will become the basis for the church to be built. So Jesus revealed that that statement he made is the foundation of the church. Peter didn't know he was talking about the church. He just felt he was defining a personality. Meanwhile, the implication was deeper. Jesus was revealing to Peter that what you are saying is what the church will be built. Why I came to this world is to establish a church so that my body 
can be operational in the earth realm. But it's the architectural intelligence that will create my body on the earth is this revelation that you brought. The church is what you have built now. So the statement Peter made was the building block of the church. He didn't know what that meant until the son gave him insight. You know, God can tell you you are a prophet. And because God says you are a prophet, everything that will make you a prophet has already been downloaded. But you will not work in it until the word of the Lord instructs you. The word of the Lord will tell you, this is how you do it. This is what you do. Wake up in the night and pray. Every Friday fast. Pray for five hours so that your spirit will be strong. Don't go to talk to this person. The word of God will give you a lot of instruction so that you can come to a place where the possibility of the prophetic can flow out of you. The father provides the resource. The son substantiates the resource. Most of us receive revelation, but we don't go to the son to substantiate it. So we run around on the street and say, an angel appeared to me and say, I am an apostle. There is a complex system of information trafficking in the spirit. If you only receive from the father, you can never enter into manifestation. Because that Peter said you are the Christ or don't mean the church has appeared. The church didn't appear because Peter caught the revelation. That's why everything God has told you will not appear just because you caught the revelation. The son must have his own impute. The impute of the son is what creates that possibility. And then the Holy Ghost comes in. It is the impute of the Holy Ghost that brings the manifestation. Hope you know even with the whole explanation of Jesus. And then his death on the cross did not translate to anything. The day the church was born was the day the Holy Ghost showed up. This is how it works. The father can come and tell you, I use this example all the time, and tell you the symptom of malaria. Maybe you are an evangelist. And then the father comes and says, the symptom of malaria is weakness of the body, is high fever, is sore throat. And then you say, oh, 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 oh. So you go and say, this is malaria. When somebody has malaria, there is high fever, there is sore throat, there is weakness of the body. You who is saying it, hope you know you don't know what malaria is. You're only talking about it. Then the son will come and tell you, if a man has malaria, he will not just have all the symptoms. He will actually be mobilized. And then he will tell you, for you to have malaria, you must first of all contact. What's the name of the, of the flu from the hospital now? Those of you who are doctors. Plasmodium. Plasmodium falciparum. He said, must enter into your body and when it enters into your body, it will contaminate your blood. And then you have malaria. Ah, you have gotten a deeper insight. But when the Holy Ghost shows up and the Holy Ghost wants to teach you about malaria, the Holy Ghost will inject you with plasmodium falciparum. <laughs> so you will not talk about sore throat. You will have sore throat. You will not talk about weakness. You will become weak. You will not talk about high fever. You will have high fever. That's the difference. The Father provides the reality. The Son substantiates it. But the Holy Ghost brings the experience. The Holy Ghost brings the experience. Before you can move in the prophetic, you may know about the prophetic. You may know you are a prophet. You may even receive the instruction of fasting and prayer. But before you flow in the word of knowledge, the Holy Ghost must whisper. The Holy Ghost must talk. The Holy Ghost is the one that brings the experience. So you must relate with the Holy Spirit every day of your life. That is why I told you that life is a function of progressive yielding to the instructions of the Holy Ghost. If you don't yield to the Holy Ghost, there is no hope for living. You may have a high calling with God. You may have a high destiny with God. But walking in it is a function of your yieldedness to the progressive instructions of the Holy Spirit. It's a system in the spirit realm. The system of information traffic. Before we come for meetings, sometimes we pray for hours. We are not praying for hours so that God can do something. He did everything in Christ Jesus. We are praying for hours so that we will be able to conduct the possibilities of those things that He has already created in Jesus. Before the healing service in the evening, we will go and lie on the floor and pray. We will roll on the floor and cry. You will see that one. That one is the back, is the dirty job. But the reason we are doing it is so that our soul can ascend. Because the things of God, they operate at different energy levels. And if your soul does not ascend, even though it's available, you cannot have it. It's locked up in your spirit or it's at an energy level. 
and your soul must ascend to touch that energy level. But those of you that understand a little bit of chemistry, you will know that electrons operate at different orbitals and different orbitals are different energy levels. When you absorb energy, when an electron absorbs energy, it excites to a higher energy level. When you go to pray, what you are doing is that you are receiving a higher supply of the spirit so that your soul can ascend and make contact with reality. It's a system of information trafficking. Most of you pray for healing. You are crying, Lord, heal me. You are already healed in Christ. But how to download it into your body? Your body is the one that needs the healing. But the healing must be downloaded. Hope you know you can have a phone and then you log on to YouTube and you are watching what is happening on YouTube. Before you have it in your phone so that you can watch it, you must have to download it. You have to download the healing into your body. The healing power of God is already available but we have to download it in the evening. If we don't download it, the people that have the challenge cannot be healed. That's why we cooperate with the Holy Spirit because it is the substance of the experience of God. You may know the doctrine, but you will not have the experience unless you know the Holy Ghost as a person. I did a teaching the other time. You know, hey, see, let me tell you something. We have made Christianity a religion. That's why most of you struggle with rules, my brother. This is not about rules. This is about life. Which rule did you obey to wake up in the morning? The protocol of life was at work in you. So when you slept and it was morning, you woke up. <laughs> it's the system in the spirit. But many don't know it. When we say cooperate with the Holy Ghost, we are actually telling you to live. Because you don't live unless you cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And then how do you participate? Your body is a complex being. You, you are a very complex being. Hey, you don't know who you are. You are a very complex being. Everything God wants you to have, you already have. When you receive Jesus Christ. The Bible said he has given us everything that pertained to life and godliness. Everything that but everything and it's not an exaggeration. Everything. But it is through the epignosis. It is through the experiential walking of those things that you can walk in the reality of those things that you already have. You want healing? It's already there. But it's not a mental thing. You want power? It's already there. It's not a mental thing. Your system is complex. There is something you must do to your system for it to flow. Because what you have in your spirit, in your spirit, you will not experience it. Hope you know I told you yesterday that God created the spirit, He formed the body, but He didn't do anything about the soul. The soul became. I told you that yesterday. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, He said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness. And He said, In the likeness of Him, He made man. Male and female, He made them. Right? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, He said, And God formed the man out of the dust of the ground. The word used in Genesis 1.26 is the word bara. It means to create out of nothing. That means the man came from within God. And God is not a substance of matter. The word used in Genesis 2.7 is the word asar. That means to create out of existing material. Your body came from the dust. It came out of existing material. Your spirit came from God. It doesn't exist in this world. And when the body and the spirit came together, the Bible says man became a living soul. What it means is that information can traffic from your spirit into your soul and manifest. Because the soul is the region of manifestation. Information can travel from your body into the soul and manifest. When we break you, where you respond is in your soul. When you receive a revelation from heaven, where it manifests is in your soul. What you are giving as word of knowledge and you are speaking in articulate English did not come to you in English. It came in spirit language. But it's in your soul that it was given expression. Hope you know when Paul was on his way to Damascus and Jesus spoke from heaven. The people that traveled with Paul, they saw light and they heard a sound. 
But what Paul was hearing was interpreted to him in his soul. The other people did not have interpretation. So they heard a sound. But Paul was hearing, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Saul was talking to what other people were calling sound. And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. He said, it is hard to kick against the priest. All this intelligent language was going on. But people were hearing sound. Because their soul was not granted the permission for interpretation. Jesus stood and he said, Now a voice spoke from heaven. And some people say, Ah, a thunder. Red. Who told you it's thunder? The other one said, An angel spoke to him. And Jesus said, Ah, ah, this word came for you. But unfortunately, the people could not interpret. But for me, this is what it means. Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the prince of the cosmos cast out. And I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. That was where Jesus received the strategy for his purpose. The strategy of fulfilling the mandate of the Father was to die on the cross. That was the day Jesus received it. But people said what? He thundered it. So much can be happening in the spirit. But because you, don't, you have not trained your soul to be able to interpret, you will be lost. Even the day some, somebody may be sick. The day the healing power came, he did not understand what was happening. So he just allowed the power to dissipate. And then he continues in his sickness. The power came, but he could not download it. But the Bible says, strong meat, it belonged to them. Who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern, to discern. The key word is to discern. But for you to discern, you must first of all exercise your senses. Let me tell you, let me show you how your body is built. Let me show you the, the anatomy and the physiology of human makeup. Because you may not understand. You think these things are coincidences. There is nothing that is a coincidence. Your spirit is made up of your conscience. It's made up of your communion. And it's made up of your intuition. If you read Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. The Bible said by the blood it will purge our heart from an evil conscience. Your spirit is made up of your conscience. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the spirit be with you. Where do you receive the communion of the spirit? First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. He that is joined with the Lord is one spirit. And it's in your intuition that you receive spiritual signals. Your spirit is made up of your conscience, your communion and your intuition. Your conscience is what keeps your spirit man upright before God. That's why the Bible said, even your faith will be wrecked if your conscience is defied. He said, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have shipwrecked their faith. That means if your conscience is maligned, your faith is useless. Because your conscience is what gives you an upright posture before God. It's a functional, operational part of your spirit. The communion is what causes you to have intimacy with the Holy Ghost. And the intuition is what makes you to receive and to understand spiritual realities. Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotion. It is in your mind that your memory, your reasoning, and your intellect is housed. That's why every processing you do, you process in your mind. It's in your emotion that you feel the flavors of life. Everything that your mind interprets, the, 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 the flavor of it is your emotion that hosts it. So I can say to you, see your head. And then you smile because you thought I was admiring your hair. You have a clean cut. And then I can say, see your head. And then you know that I've insulted you. And then you feel bad. So it's the same sentence, different interpretation, different emotional response. Your emotion is a function of the processing of your mind. So it's not necessarily about what you hear. It's about the interpretation of what you hear. That's why info, that's how information are trafficked. Same utterance, different interpretation, different emotional response. And then your will is the region of action. It's your will that causes your actions and your inactions. See your head. 
Even though you feel bad, you may say, if I talk back, it will not be good since he's a pastor and he's preaching. But if we are outside and I say, see your head, you say, are you all right? <laughs> so you took an action based on your, your judgment. Your soul is made up of your mind, your emotion, and your will. And then your body. You have five senses in your body. Biologically. But um, these five senses are actually the modified. You know the sense of sight, the sense of hearing, the sense of smelling, the sense of touch, and the sense of um, taste. When was the last time you did something because of taste? When you dress well and you want everybody to see you, is it because of hearing? Or when you came, that day you came with your father's jeep and you wanted to park in the field where the whole students are doing sport. And then you drove and screeched just to cause attention. Is it because of smell? <laughs> there is something the fall did to our senses. It remodified our senses. And our senses became a faculty of lust. So most of the things we did, we do in the flesh are motivated by lust. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It is the lust of the eyes that controls every action you take based on human intelligence. You do that in order to satisfy some form of gratification that is a product of the fallen man. It is the lust of the flesh that motivates everything we do for our appetite and satisfaction. The reason the young lady will go and have sex because she needs money is because she wants to put on a Brazilian hair so that everybody in the class will know that she's the happening girl. She wants to buy the latest iPhone, not because she loves the iPhone, because when she's at home in the hostel, she throws the iPhone somewhere. But when she's coming to the class, she needs to hold the iPhone because there is a lust in her that needs to be satisfied. So she didn't sleep with a man because she loves sex. She didn't sleep with a man because she has no self-control. She slept with that man because there is a pride of life controlling her. When she gets home, she doesn't even know where the iPhone is. But if she wants to go out, she must hold the iPhone in her hands. Because everybody has got to see her that she's the one with the latest iPhone 9. <laughs> Your body is made up of three senses. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. This is how these, four, this, this is how these three sets of senses operate. For you to receive, remember, your soul is the region of what? Manifestation, right? That's why you, we are called persons. Do you know why we are called persons? Because we are personalities. Personality simply means your faculty that gives expression to your essence. When we say this is your personality, we are actually talking about the manifestation of who you are. Your real essence. Its form of manifestation is what we call your personality. And that is a cardinal operational part of your body called your soul. So everything that is happening in your spirit, we will not know it until we see it happen or manifest by the operation of your soul. Remember, Mary had an encounter with God and she went to Elizabeth, her cousin. And when she came to Elizabeth and after the salutation, she made a statement. She said, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in the God of my salvation. Do you know what happened there? What Mary was saying, my soul dot is present tense. My spirit heart is past tense. So what Mary was saying is that my spirit rejoiced in the Lord long before now. But I didn't know what it means. It is now that I understand what the rejoicing is. The rejoicing that my spirit was having in the Lord. Now the interpretation is my soul is that my soul is magnifying the Lord. So when something happens in the spirit, it is trafficked through your soul and it is manifested. When you have an encounter with God, it is manifested through your soul. And this is the channel of manifestation. The intuition is the intelligent part of your spirit. If your intuition picks something from the realm of God, the only way your soul can catch it is through your mind. So those informations are interpreted to your mind. So your mind is the connection to your intuition. What your spirit receives from God, the knowledge your spirit receives from God, is your mind that possesses it. What you call word of knowledge, you call the name John. 
uh, that name is not called like that in the spirit. You remember Jesus said, I will give you a new name that no man know it. There's a spiritual name. Oh, have you, you understand computer sciences? You know binary numbers. When you write Peter on the computer, what is actually written in the computer is 0011, They are in zeros and in ones. But when you write Peter, you think it's Peter. The computer is interpreting 00101001111. That's what Peter is in the computer language. But it has to be decoded for you. So when your spirit picks something in your intuition, your mind interprets it and it calls it, The Lord lost me. The Lord told me to go to Lagos and start an apostolic work. The Lord has told me to start a business of pure water. Jesus did not mention pure water. Jesus spoke in spirit language, but your mind interpreted pure water. So the reason you came to Ignidion University and you started a fellowship is not because Jesus said Ignidion. It's not because Jesus said fellowship. Jesus may have spoken. But you heard Ignidion. You heard fellowship. You heard JCCF. It was not pronounced in heaven as JCCF. It was Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Do you know why we worship Him all the time? Because we have judged. We looked at ourselves and we judged and we discovered there is nothing in us that has value. The only thing that has value is Christ in me, the hope of glory. I checked, I checked, I checked. I thought I was intelligent. In my university days, I was a scholar. I was a university scholar. But when I stepped out, I realized my certificate counted for nothing. My certificate if, if my PSC does not come for anything My masters come for nothing Even the PhD I'm doing now Comes for nothing Because there is no chemistry in apostolic writing I am an apostle of Jesus And chemistry does not have a part to play In apostolic I check myself Everything that I call a natural advantage When I looked at the handwriting of my destiny It did not add an impute Because when my destiny was written By the finger of fire In the archives of heaven there was nothing written about my natural ability. God was speaking. And he said, Michael, on earth you will depend on me to speak. You will depend on me to think. You will depend on me to walk. Because it is in me that you live. It is in me that you have your being. You have no value without me. That is why every morning I rise up. I say glory to the Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. Even the ones that live in the heights of the heaven. The Bible said the 20 and 4 elders, they fell from their throne. They casted their crown and they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The four beasts that stand before him, he said, day and night without ceasing. They cry, holy, holy, holy. Because when we checked, the last time we checked, creation has no value apart from God. There's no value in creation apart from God. You pride yourself in your looks. Someday, your beautiful face will be buried in the grave. You pride yourself in your intelligence. The day your life is threatened, you understand that your reasoning powers does not have the ability to save your life. Man does not live by breath. We are not moved by the things that happen because it's not given to man that walketh to water his steps. Everything about us was encoded in the very heights of Zion. There is an archive in heaven where your destiny was written. You are not called to be creative. You are called to be obedient. Your life is a story that God is telling from heaven. Every step you take is a statement on the tongue of the immortal one. Jesus never stepped out until the spirit spoke because he knew how these things work. Most of us take steps every morning because we think we are intelligent. You are creating a set of contradictions that will affect you in the days to come. That club you went to yesterday, that is what will result in a pregnancy. That is what will result in an abortion. And you didn't know the devil was setting you up never to have a successful marriage. When they were removing your womb, you never knew it would end like that. You thought it was a one night stand where you would get the money to make your hair. You never knew your womb was being bargained. When Satan operates in your direction, he is considering your future. You are the one killing your future and sacrificing it on the altar of temporary pressure. You ancient Zion king. Kadosh. Kadosh. 
you are mighty. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are you are you are worshiping God much more than preaching. You see, when I'm preaching, you are being blessed. Yeah, sometimes I feel the anointing. I enjoy it. But when I worship God, my essence, everything pours out like a river. I feel God. I feel God. It's like the river that makes it glad, the city of God. If we had our way, when I come for service, we'll worship God for one hour and preach for 15 minutes and move in power for 15 minutes. I love worshiping God. Can you look to heaven now and give thanks? Maybe you have judged your mind and you see it's futile. You have seen that your body can take you nowhere. You have seen that your father is the governor, but your destiny has nothing to do with him. Hey! Kadosh, Kadosh, you are my. obey here as laws is the culture of heaven. The way you sleep and wake up, that's why, that's how righteous living in heaven is a natural thing. But you don't know it, so they are giving to you as a set of rules. When you allow life to begin to flow through you, those things will no longer be a rule. It will be a culture of life. That's why the Bible said, against love there is no law. But this is how you make life to work. The Holy Ghost is the bandwidth of life. The bandwidth of life. The data of life is transmitted in the Holy Spirit. How does your will work? Your will. It works by a good conscience. Did you notice the last time you did something and then you were restless? You were troubled. You lied to the person. Or you hurt the person. And your conscience will not let you rest. You say, go and apologize. Go and apologize. You want to be healthy in the spirit? you must apologize. Because if you don't, what you are doing is that you are searing your conscience with a hot iron. When your conscience dies, your life has ended. Because nothing you do will be recorded in heaven anymore. Because in heaven, the only things that will pass through the gate of eternity is the things you do by faith. And the Bible said, holding faith and a good conscience 
which some having put away concerning faith have shipwrecked their faith. So when your conscience dies, your faith is shipwrecked. What you are doing may be passion and zeal, it's not faith. And it will not appear in the regions of Zion. I spoke to you about spiritual radars yesterday. You may be doing so much on earth, but in heaven they are not seeing it. They are not seeing it. They will be wondering what's happening. They can't feel you. This thing I'm speaking, if you look at the amplifier, signals are moving. Signals. Signals. When your heart is beating, signals are moving on the machine. When the signals stop moving, even if you are alive, the doctor will say you are dead. Because there's no pulse anymore. When your conscience dies, your faith has no pulse in heaven. So you may be doing things and think you are pleasing God. They are not seeing the pulse in heaven. Hope you know if you lie down when you are in coma. The reason they still say you are alive is not because if you see somebody who is in coma, you can say he's dead. But the doctor say he's alive. Why? Because there is pulse. Sometimes they can't even feel the pulse at the wrist. But the machine is reading the pulse. They will wait. But the day the pulse stop, even if you cough, oh, they will say bury him, he's dead. When your conscience is shipwrecked, you don't have, you cannot appear in the radars of heaven. Your conscience is the regulator of your action. The, hell, the strength of your will is predicated on a good conscience. So you cannot, da- you cannot download the dimension of righteousness unless your will is perfectly aligned with your conscience. Righteousness is a function of the alignment of the will with the conscience. The moment the conscience is compromised, there's no righteousness. The moment your will is disaligned, there's no righteousness. Your conscience is the dimension of you that the Holy Ghost traffics the righteousness of God through. And that is why your conscience regulates your action. It is the system of information trafficking in the spirit. How does your emotion work? Do you know you need to purge your emotions? You don't know. Do you know why sometimes we just stay in the presence of God? We just stay there. We just stay there. Because some of us, our emotions have been infected with viruses. I was telling you about the background technology yesterday. How that you cannot see me on the altar unless you see the background. Some of the things you have done before, the experience of seeing you had, they have, they have injected virus in your emotion. If you want your emotion to be purged, you need to stay in the presence of God for a long time. Do you know why most times when the power of God is moving, people are overwhelmed? People are overwhelmed because their emotions, the Holy Ghost comes strong on their emotions and they can't bear it. Their brain can no longer interpret what's happening. So they just collapse. That's the system of God too, to reconfigure their emotions. Sometimes you came with lust and then people fall down and they rise up and lust has gone. They don't know when it stopped. But they just discovered lust is no longer there. The guy who every day has strange appetites, he wants to drink star or more lagapia. He came for a meeting. They didn't talk about more. They didn't talk about drunkenness. But the power of God came on him. He collapsed, he woke up, and then he didn't have appetite for more anymore. Uh, what's happened? Me, personally, I was a football fan, a crazy fan. We were, we were crazy fans. If you, if you, if you call us now, you have touched my sensitive part. We were not winning trophies, but you can't win us in an argument. Hey, hey, hey. this tongue has served many functions before it started serving Jesus. We will argue for three hours. You can't. Even when I was writing my work. I had chemistry the next day and they were writing champ they were playing Champions League finals. That was in 2006. Arsenal and Barcelona, we were there. <laughs> Man, we were slaves. And suddenly I went for a meeting. And Apostle was preaching. The English was so complex. But I was just understanding enjoying the intensity of God because when you hear him, something is happening to your heart. You may not understand, but your heart is heavy. Your heart, the man deposits God in your heart. He puts God inside your heart. The particles of God are deposited. And the power of God moves so strongly. And I was overwhelmed. When I went to the house, the next day there was March. We changed and we went. I sat in the studio. I was sleeping throughout. Uh, what's happening? The desire was dying. I will be looking like this and be dozing. Ah, me? And in this studio, people are shouting from the beginning to the end. How was I able to sleep there? Something had died. I have lost my place in the world. You know, there is a level you walk with God that even if you go back to the dear father, you have lost your place. 
you don't have a place there anymore. The Bible said concerning Lucifer, he said there is no place found. You go back to where your guys, you don't have a place. They are drinking beer, you sat with them, you put a bottle of beer, but you don't have a place. They will not even notice you are there. You have lost your place. I was sleeping in the studio. And then the next time they had match, I said, I'm tired. And I didn't watch match again till today. The, the, the team died. You know what happened? The Holy Ghost walked on my appetite. He walked on my emotions. You know why we don't fight against slain anointing? People make a religion out of it now. So most times, when I come for meeting, I say, you mustn't fall down. You mustn't, but uh, you can't stop it. It's an operation of the Holy Spirit. From the first day, even before I started ministry, people were falling down. It's the operation of the Holy Ghost. You don't know what the Lord is doing with them. But most of the times, if God wants to deal with your emotions, He overwhelms you. He overwhelms you so that He can have all your attention. That was what He did to Adam to remove the reed. God wanted to form Eve out of Adam. But the distraction would not let God rest. God is trying to say, come, let me remove your reed. He said, this is lion. I want the lion to have authority over all the animals. He said, that if you go under the, the, the ocean, there is a fish there called shark. Eh, God is not talking about shark. They want to create Eve now. Adam is still calling animals. So God had to touch him. And he was overwhelmed. When he laid down there, God removed his reed and formed Eve. The purpose and the destiny that God has planted in you, sometimes if he wants to bring it out of you, he has to slay you. Because you know so much. You know so much. God is saying, give all the money you have in your pocket. And then you are telling God, there's a widow close to my house. The husband is dead. She has four children. Instead of giving this money, I need to pay, give her part of this money to pay school fees. If that boy's school fees is paid, he will become a reasonable. God said, give all the money. That one is not your part. It's his part. But most times, because our mind do not allow God to praise, what happened? We are slain. He came for the service, he's watching. Let me see what this man of God has. What can he do? Let's see. Why you are saying, what can he do? Then something knocks you, you go down. Because you are trying to rob yourself of your blessing. That's how God deals with the emotion. He purchases your emotion. The psalmist said, and the Lord restored my soul. It's a system of information trafficking. The bandwidth of life flowing through the Holy Ghost can only get through you when the chambers of your soul are connected to your spirit. Your mind connects your intuition. Your will connects your conscience. And your emotion connects the communion of the spirit. The unfortunate thing is that that's not the only direction that information travels. This is where the demonic realm comes in. And if I explain the demonic, I will tell you why we always talk about the sacrifice of alignment. Because when we talk about the sacrifice of alignment, we are not saying pay the price to, for anything. Jesus paid the price for everything. We are only saying pay the price for the experience of the things Jesus has paid for. We are only saying pay the price to get your soul consistently aligned with your spirit. Because your soul can also align with your body. Alignment is the connectivity of the soul to the spirit against the body. It's the price you pay. There are other means of traffic. You know, the Bible said something. Are you learning something this morning? Let me read the scripture for you. First Corinthians 2. Corinthians 2 verse 12. He said, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. There are two things you need to get from this scripture before we proceed. First, there are two spirits that you can receive. You can receive the Holy Ghost and you can also receive the spirit of the world. And he says something. He said that we might. That's a contrasting phrase. If the Holy Spirit reveals to you the things of God, that means the spirit of the world forbids you from knowing the things of God. The Holy Ghost causes you to traffic 
in the Godward direction, the spirit of the world causes you to traffic against the Godward direction. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, and see what the Bible says. He said, But if our gospel be hid, are you seeing what I'm telling you? So the spirit of, of the world can rob you of the knowledge of God. The same way the Holy Ghost can make available to you the knowledge of God. He said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded, have blinded their hearts, have blinded their minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, will shine. So the spirit of the world causes you to travel in another side of knowledge. The knowledge that is not the knowledge of God. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 14, the Bible says, love not the world. He said, they that love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. He said, what is in the world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That means, the direction you follow by the spirit of this world that makes you not to receive the knowledge of God is the direction of lust. When we talk about the eyes, we talk about intelligence. So the lust of the eyes connects to your mind. The things you see, the things you perceive from the world, they are the intelligence system that will corrupt the operational dimension of your mind. That is why they tell you that every pastor wants to collect money from people. That's the ideology of the world. So when you want to give, the Holy Ghost says give. And then your faith moves, you want to give. And you now hear that kind. These pastors, they say that they collect money. And then you check. And you carry the smallest amount. What is happening? Another kind of intelligence. Making you to become rebellious to the Holy Spirit. Have you not known why most of you are afraid of the dark? Have you ever seen a spirit before? But they told you that evil spirits are in the dark. So every time you are in the dark, oh, come, come, let's go outside. The intelligence of the world. They tell you, if you are not fair, you will not be attractive. So 70% of the ladies, they are combining seven creams to look fair. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is not beauty that makes you marry. It is favor. So instead of traveling in the direction of favor, they are traveling in beauty. So they rub all the foundations and the mascara. When they are 33 years old, then they come to the altar and kneel down. All I am is yours. All I am. No. All you are is for foundation. Now foundation has failed. They thought when they were growing up, they are seven friends. Every time they are going anywhere, they are in the middle because they are the boss queen. Now all the ugly girls have married. The next time they had meeting, they came with three of their children. So it becomes a shame. The boss queen now becomes the heat queen. They lost of the eyes. They do all kinds of things to receive the approval of people. The lost of the eyes. Those things corrupt your soul because they bring new ideologies to your mind. And your soul have no opinion. Your soul is only a processor. You see, your, your laptop can be processing information. If you put a virus there, your laptop will process the virus. Because your laptop is what? A processor. That's how the soul works. Your mind is a processor. You are here now, you are a prayer warrior, you think, ah, sin can, ah, sin can have dominion over me. The reason sin can have dominion over you is because you are constantly beholding the Lord. If you begin to behold pornography, in the next two months, you will be in the dark walking towards the girls' campus. The soul is a processor. And that's still why we talk about the sacrifice of alignment. I'm not talking about righteousness because I cannot be thrown down. I'm talking righteousness because I know in this life I'm sentenced to God only. So I can't fall, not because I'm strong, but because God in me is strong. If you begin to behold another, you become. It's a law of the spirit. What you see, you become. You know, God said to Moses, He said, No man will look at me and leave. Moses thought it was death. It's not death. If you see God, you become like Him. It was John that revealed it. He said, As we behold Him, we are changed. 
in first John chapter 3, verse 1. He said, What manner of love have the Father bestowed upon us that we should become the Son of God? He said, It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as it is, as He is. If you see the devil, you become like the devil. Constantly behold the things of the devil, you become the devil. And if you constantly behold God, you become God. Because we all, with unveiled faces, beholding us in a glass, the image of the Lord, we are changed. The devil corrupts the vistas of your physical sight so that you can see things and interpret them through the lust of the eyes. And that's why most of us, our souls are corrupt. People come to me, they say, they can't live a holy life. Nobody can. The reason we are living holy lives is because we can behold God. So the question is not trying to be holy. The question is keeping your focus on God and holiness become a natural byproduct. You are on Facebook every day looking at all the ladies that post naked pictures and you want to live a holy life. How? They say, club, there's a party today. You say, well, me, I don't go to party. But you sit in front of your hostel and all the ladies going on bomb shot. You are looking at them. I don't go to party. You are the, the, the most deceived man in the century. We all with unveiled faces. What you see, you become. It's the intelligence of information traffic. The lust of the flesh. What you touch controls you. What you see, you help the sister, please. I want to keep it calm. What you see, you become. What you touch controls you. The lust of the flesh. That's why the devil is pushing you. If you know the number of demons that are whispering to you, you think you are the one thinking. Hey, he said, call her now, call her, call her. Yes, now she is expecting your call. Don't you know she wants to hear your voice? Then it would remind you. See that time you saw her in the afternoon. See the way she smiled. You are not thinking, no. If the spirit realm opens, you will see four demons whispering. You don't know how demons work. The Bible said the devil roams like a roaring lion. These guys are on assignment on your life. <laughs> you don't know the demons that are, are on your matter. Call her, call her. You think you are thinking. Who told you? When you have exam to write, you are not thinking exam. You are thinking when the lady smiled last two weeks. And you think you are that intelligent. If you are that intelligent, why don't you understand and remember what the lecturer says? One sentence in class you can't remember in the exam. And then the lady that smiled at you three weeks ago among ten ladies, you can remember. Who told you you are that intelligent? The spirit realm. They call her. Call her. She's smiling. She's waiting for your call. Even yesterday, you, you think she was not telling her friends. That time she was smiling. She was telling her friends about you. See the way your shoe was shining. You are a foolish man. Aka, aka, ya. Akaji over the Bema or a Bubea and a Gilani Bema. Easy, you can do. Akaya Akaji over the Bema Akaya Akaya Akaji over the Bema. The lust of the flesh is a strategy of enslaving you forever. When you become a slave of your senses, you are perpetually God. God knows. That's why he said we live by faith, not by sight. The word sight is sensory perception. Your feelings are a lie. Did you not notice that the things you thought you liked three weeks ago, now you can't even look at them. When I used to be small, I don't like onions. If you give me food, I'll pack all the onions and throw away. Now I'm a king of onions. Because your feelings... You can't live life by feelings. Don't be deceived, brother. 
demons are intelligent. They know how you were designed. They know how you were fabricated. The Bible spoke about the principalities. The word principality means first among the ranks. He said they were there when the foundations of the world were sculpted. He said they sank into the fabric of creation. When God was designing you, the angels were already made and most of them fell. They know how you were designed. They know your dimensions. The devil will not tempt me and you to say because by instrument of, of familiar spirit, they have a data bank of information. The devil knows the temptation that brought your great grandfather down. He knows the one that brought your grandfather down. He knows the one that brought your father down. And he knows that on the strength of DNA encoding, 90% that same temptation will bring you down. Yours may be lost. Mine may be pride. Demons are on assignment and it's by the systems of the lust of the flesh. That was why Abraham loved fair women. Isaac loved fair women. Jacob loved fair women. It's a transparency of DNA encoding. The lust of the flesh. If you become a man of feelings, you are a slave forever. You walk by faith. It was said in the Old Testament. It was said before Jesus and it was said after Jesus. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Romans 1 17. Galatians 3 33 6 13. And Hebrews 13 verse 11. He said the just shall live by faith. Not by fear. Your feeling. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video. Make sure that you click on the share button. And share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video. So that YouTube can recommend this video. To other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question. Please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.